Hey everyone, and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey, and today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna look at Oculink, at least Oculink on the GPD Win 4 here, versus USB 4, which is also on the GPD Win 4 here, using an eGPU. And basically we're just gonna see, obviously I think a lot of us know Oculink is better. It's got more bandwidth and all of that. It's not relying on a lot of the things that the USB 4 is, but I'm very curious to see by how much. So thought it would be fun. Have a device here that has both connections it would be the perfect test case to just see how do they compare and how much of a difference is it really with an eGPU. So the eGPU that I'm gonna be using in this video is the GPD G1, and I believe this is the 2024 version, has the 7600 MXT inside of it. So it's a decent enough eGPU, and I've been using it for a while now on different devices. I did a whole video with the ROG Ally X, and uh, I've done it with the GPD Win 4. I think I did it with the Win Mini in the past. So I've been using it for quite a bit, and I've just been curious to see, now that I have an Oculink device and I grabbed an Oculink cable, how well does it do? In all honesty, it doesn't really matter what devices I have. The percentage gains should be pretty much similar across the board for other devices, percentage wise at least. So today should help you in making a decision on if Oculink is worth the amount of money to buy for you, or if you're okay with a USB 4 device if you're gonna be going with an eGPU. So let's dive right in and we're gonna look at some benchmarks, some charts, some footage, all that stuff, because I did a whole bunch of different tests for different games and I'm gonna talk about some games that might be missing from the benchmarks and why they are missing. Some popular games like maybe Cyberpunk, you're gonna notice isn't there. We'll talk about it later as to why, but otherwise I have a good range of games that we tested and so we can look at for differences. Starting off with Assassin's Creed Origins, and this is a favorite game of mine personally. With USB 4, I was able to get an average frame rate of about 80 FPS, whereas with Oculink, it was 118 FPS. That is a 47.5 percentage increase in performance from just using Oculink over USB 4. That's pretty big. Performance is on high here, and while 30 FPS might not seem like a lot, with lower graphic settings, that would grow. The difference between the two would be exponential as you keep going. 47 and a half is a large number to start with. Now, just a reminder again, as far as Oculink goes, it is 63 gigabytes per second in bandwidth, and USB 4 is 40 gigabytes per second in bandwidth. So we already have a difference there, 63, compared to 40, which would make up a lot of the performance that we're gonna see today, but that's not the full picture in a lot of scenarios. Then we jump over to a newer game, and this is Assassin's Creed Shadows. And with USB 4, I saw an average of 42 FPS, with a minimum of 24, maximum of 56, and our lowest 1% was 34, with the lowest 0.1 being 29 FPS. With Oculink, we got an average of 61 FPS, minimum of 10, maximum of 97, and our lowest 1% was 36, and our lowest 0.1% was 18. Some weird and interesting values for the minimum and lowest 0.1 with Oculink, but with the average frames, we are once again seeing a 45% increase from 42 to 61 FPS here by just using Oculink. Now, reminder again for today, we are not looking for the best performance. This obviously you could lower graphic settings, get better performance, all of that sort of thing. It is more to tax the graphics card, see what sort of benefits we can get from just upgrading from one to the other. So let's see if this all continues with Batman Arkham Knight. And this with USB 4, we have 58 FPS minimum, 273 maximum, and 136 average. Then on the Oculink side, we have a 73 FPS minimum, 273 maximum again, and 148 average. This time we are seeing a much lower 8% improvement from using Oculink, more in line with what I was expecting coming into this video and what I was guessing to be the scenario. But it seems like there are some games at least that we tested already that benefit a lot from Oculink and then some games that maybe just don't. Black Myth Wukong sort of continued that same trend that Batman started. And you can see here with USB 4, we have a 78 FPS average, 95 maximum, 
44 minimum, and 71 FPS as the low fifth. With Oculink, we only see 88 FPS average, 112 maximum, 49 minimum, and 72 low fifth. This is once again only a 13% increase by using Oculink, although Black Myth Wukong is just a tough customer of a video game, usually doesn't do very well either with big FPS increases like this. So you're rarely going to see that, and not too surprising that we're finding out that this is really a game by game basis for Oculink vs USB 4. Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered brings us right back to our original numbers, with USB 4 getting a 41 FPS average, a minimum of 20, and a maximum of 86. Oculink got us an average of 64 FPS, minimum of 8, and a maximum of 139. There is that minimum being lower again for some reason with Oculink, and I'm not too sure why, but we are back to a 56% increase in frames here with Oculink. That is just a crazy number. Then we get to our largest difference in a game that I tested, and surprisingly, it is Immortals Phoenix Rising. With USB 4, getting an average of 59 FPS, minimum of 13, and a maximum of 86. Oculink got a whopping 112 average, 23 minimum and 184 maximum. That is a 90% increase here in benefit for this game. I actually did this test twice just to double check that nothing went wrong on two different days and I got the same answer. So I'm actually starting to see why Oculink is so revered by the numbers. In a lot of scenarios, these are some big numbers that we are seeing difference wise here. Lastly, we have Middle Earth Shadow of War, and this is one where the numbers were a lot smaller of an upgrade, very similar to Batman and earlier games like Wukong. USB 4 with 96 FPS average, and Oculink with 107 FPS average. And it is a small 11% increase here, not a big one. Okay, so as I explained earlier, before you ask, where is Cyberpunk? Where is Red Dead Redemption 2? Where is Monster Hunter Wilds? And where is Shadow of the Tomb Raider? And the answer is, for every single one of those games, I either had a crash of the system, or it just didn't work, or whatever. I had a lot of problems getting those games to do benchmarks, or even just run. And it could be a number of different things. I am running Bazite on the GPD Win 4. It could be some weirdness there with the eGPU. Not sure. If I was running Windows, I'm betting it would probably be okay, but... There's the other problems with Windows that we would talk about later, but either way, for some reason, those games that I listed, I also tried to do benchmarks on, could not get it to work. So unfortunately, couldn't put it in today's video, but I think I gave it a good enough effort into the video games that I picked. And we can see now uh, the different benefits of Oculink over USB 4 from a variety of different games. So what is the takeaway from today's video? And if you came in thinking that Oculink would come out ahead in a lot of scenarios by a large amount, then congratulations, you win for today. In some scenarios, the Oculink comes out way ahead by a large number. And then in other scenarios, it's a lot lower, but in every scenario it is coming out ahead. So the long and the short of it is, if you are looking at an eGPU or maybe you have one and you've been wondering if it's worth spending the 50, 60, 70 or so dollars to get an Oculink cable that actually works with it instead of using the USB 4 that came with it, then the answer is yes, absolutely. It seems like it is definitely worth it for you to swap over to using Oculink instead of USB 4 for a variety of different reasons. Now, USB 4 is no slouch in any department. It's available on a lot more handhelds. It's a little bit more compatible in that way, but it's not going to get you the gains that Oculink will as we saw today. So, I don't think you should be angry or sad if you have a USB 4 type device and you want to use an eGPU with it. You're just not going to get that full throughput. You're not going to get that full bandwidth like you would with Oculink. And you should just be aware of today, at least of what those numbers look like in difference. Anyways, links in the description to everything I talked about today, other videos that I did on the Win 4 and on the eGPU in case you want to dive a little bit deeper, as well as how to set up the eGPU for Windows because it's a little bit more difficult than uh, a Bazite where it's just kind of plug and play for the most part. So if you want to check those out, check out the videos in the description and you can go down a little bit of a rabbit hole. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about retro handhelds. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.